The day before yesterday, I talked about the book, The Story of O, and uh, it's a piece of erotic literature, which sounds just like a uh, smut, uh, sounds like something easily to be dismissed as smutty, but it's uh, something that, as I, as I talked about last time, is a really quite interesting um, uh, work of literature to look at uh, as, as far as what it has to say about various things. Um, and I'm just going to talk about two possible interpretations of the story of O. These, these both just um, struck my mind as I was reading it, um, because there, it's, it's, it's a work that invites you to see it on a deeper level. Um, and, uh, that's one of the earmarks of literature is that it never means just one thing. It's never just about what happens in the story. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it has resonances. Um, and there's two ways to interpret this story or, well, there's more, probably more than two, but there's two I'm going to, I'm going to concern myself with. Okay. First of all, the story of O could be read as ironically an allegory for uh, religious zeal and devotion. Now, I'm not the first one who, who has said this. I, I've, uh, I, I'm familiar with some others who've, who have had, uh, or, or critics who, who have had similar responses to this work. Why does it lend itself to that interpretation? Well, in the book, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, uh, think things of a very carnal and depraved nature, uh, are taking place, but one can see these, uh, these events, um, as allegorical for, uh, and, and to, to, uh, to represent the soul of a person who, gives herself totally to the man that she loves and does whatever his bidding is for her and is, is happy to do it and feels all the more, uh, all the more free in, uh, in her slavery, so to speak. And she, th slavery is a word that is used in the book. Um, uh, I don't know what the, the French word that, they, they, that they're translating is, but in the English translation, slavery is uh, the state that, that she, uh, she, she talks about having become enslaved uh, and, and uh, being happy to be uh, the slave of, um, of the man that she loves. So this, this ultimately is a book about a woman who has a, a strong devotion uh, and is willing to go to any length to, to do what her lover requires of her. And I don't think it's that hard to see in, in, in an allegorical sense to see a, uh, a theological or, or a religious, uh, interpretation of, uh, of the book in that, in that regard. I mean, one thinks of, well, I, I was going to say Job, but Job doesn't really work because Job, uh, you know, he endures all of this suffering and he doesn't know why it's happening. And he's not happy about it happening, but he doesn't, uh, he, he never, gives in and curses God for having lost all these things that, that he's been given and, and for, for being thrust in the, into such misery. He endures it and uh, understands that, uh, you know, in spite of everything, that uh, God is good and that, that uh, there's, uh, there's a reason why things these things are happening, even though he cannot understand them. You know, the whole, why do bad things happen to good people thing, which is almost like a, a, a truism, the way that it's talked about sometimes, um, even though it's, it's, it's something, it's also 
it has to become a pr profound part of any believer's experience because, you know, we all have experienced things not going our way, not, not just not going our way, but we, we, we experience, we go through things where it seems to us that, uh, evil prevails over good or, uh, someone is afflicted who seems, uh, and it doesn't seem to be fair or make any sense, you know, terminally sick children, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I could, I could go into a big list of, of what I'm talking about, but I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. And Job is more about just sitting back and, or, or, or just, just shrugging your shoulders and saying, I'm, I don't know why this is happening. And, and I'm, you know, definitely, definitely, uh, in, in a, uh, in a state of, uh, of mourning and suffering about, about all of this, but, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hang on and, uh, uh, and, and trust in the Lord. But the, the ecstasies of a, uh, a martyr, let's say, are more what the story of O kind of represents. What happens to O in this in this uh, in the story in the in the tale, which is told from her perspective, is that one after another after another, you know, uh, uh, like I said, the ante keeps getting up to, as far as what's required of her, and uh, her lover uh, at first you know, has her go, uh, go to this Illuminati, <laughs> basically kind of an Illuminati whorehouse, uh, and become one of the whores in the whorehouse and be subjected to, to whippings, uh, you know, at the whim of, of anybody who, who wants to give them, um, you know, and, uh, has to give herself to anybody who, uh, uh, who, who, uh, wants her at any particular time, any man who's frequenting this, this Illuminati whorehouse, um, so, uh, you know, and she has to, she has to, uh, uh, she, she has to be submissive to the extent that she endures, uh, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of wretched, uh, experiences and all kinds of, uh, humiliations and, and violations and, and, uh, degradations. But, but for her throughout the entirety of the story, m much like a, mar you know, you hear about, uh, a, a would be martyr or a, a man or a woman who is just, who just has such zeal to do God's will that, will, will absolutely, you know, for all, for everything that, that they're forced to endure, that this kind of, that, that, uh, this kind of, uh, devoted believer is forced to endure, which would make others say, God, how could you do this to me? Um, for them, it's, it's like, uh, you know, this just brings me closer to you. The more, the more you put me through, the more suffering uh, I have to endure this, this suffering brings me ecstasy, <laughs> brings me the ecstasy of, you know, um, of someone who's truly devoted, of someone who truly loves God. Um, and you know, there, there are, you do hear accounts like that. You do hear of people like that, who, of, uh, there are, there are not all saints, of course, one of the wonderful, wonderful things about the saints is there's, there's so many different types of saints. There's no, uh, uh, prescribed way to be a saint. Um, saints have all different kinds of personalities. Some are very jolly and, you know, uh, good natured and, and live very long lives and, and, and happy lives. Uh, others, you know, live, uh, Others are very austere, uh, and, you know, live very short lives filled with pain and suffering. But, uh, but the, 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 the bottom line is that what make, what connects them all is, is, uh, their, their sanctity. 
And I'm talking about here, allegorically speaking, that O could be compared to the, the, the kind of saint uh, who, who um, again, willfully endures suffering after suffering uh, and degradation after degradation because she trusts in the Lord. Um, in this case, her Lord is, is, uh, is her man, right? And, and uh, it used to be a thing if, you, if someone was of a, of a particular, I don't know, stature, if someone, if a man had a, had a particular title, he would be your Lord, my Lord, or, or your Lordship, or something like that. It's not, that's not terminology that anybody would use today, but, but it is uh, significant in, in that, uh, you know, you, you serve your Lord uh, just as you serve the Lord, but, but much more, much more so, you know, you, you serve, you serve your Lord, you serve the, the, um, uh, the, the person who, the man who has this kind of rank and, uh, who, uh, you know, provides you with sustenance and, and uh, a living and, and, uh, uh, but, but who, but who has this rank or, or uh, this place in the hierarchy that's above you. And, and so therefore they have the title of Lord. Um, and, uh, in that sense, uh, if, if you take the, the lover of the story as al being some allegory, some, an allegory, an allegory for God in his more mysterious and more you know, uh, uh, when, when God allows bad things to happen to good people or, or, uh, makes good people endure terrible suffering. Um, you know, things like the stigmata, uh, or, uh, or, you know, where they, where the, the reported incidents of where saints, and it seems to me that this is more of a thing for female saints uh, although I don't know that for sure, but it does, it does seem like almost like a certain kind of devotion might come easier to the feminine soul, uh, in some ways, just because, uh, of the way the feminine is, we are all feminine in, uh, to God in our relationships vis-a-vis -vis God. Uh, God is, 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 uh, is the master. He's, he's the, uh, he's the, the man, uh, and, and we are like the, the, the bridegroom and, uh, you know, just like a man in a married relationship, it's, it's his job to provide for and to take care of his wife and his children. Uh, and it's, it's the, the wife's job to be the help meet of, of the husband, um, in, in, in traditional, uh, ways of thinking about these things, of course, not for us, not for you, all you modern people out there who just are like, oh, that's just, that's just so, uh, so reactionary. Okay. I'm not talking to you all. Uh, but, but just, just if, if you, if you have a problem thinking of things that way, just remember, this is all allegorically speaking. Um, and the important thing isn't so much the way that society is structured as it is the way that our uh, ideas and notions of uh, of God and ourselves in relation to God uh, are form or formed or are formulated. So, in that sense, O can be seen as a uh, as as something allegorical, as something as allegorically speaking, something like you know, some a one who quests to be. Uh, closer to God, and yes, I'm I'm using the Nine Inch Nails song. Uh, I'm quoting the Nine Inch Nails song with you know ironic, ironically but advisedly here. Um. So, so that's one possible interpretation of Story of O. The second possible interpretation is that what we have in the Story of O is a critique of the, uh, um, the behavior and the, 
uh, the common practices of the uh, of the ruling class, the top whatever percent point point whatever percent. Uh, that's why I refer to the uh, it's the place called Wasi, the uh, I call it, well, the place I call the Illuminati brothel, that O is forced to attend uh, by her lover or is compelled to attend. It's it's never a question of being forced. She could always have have refused, but she does it because she wants, she wants to do, uh, what her love tells her to do. She wants, she, she wants to be devoted to him. And, uh, and so what, uh, this is, this is another way of reading the book. And it's almost diametrically opposed to the first, because the first way of reading it is, to think of all of the degradations that she's enduring, um, uh, you know, the whips, the the violations, the uh, what what actually actually culminates in a scene where her buttocks are branded uh, with with a man's initials. Does that sound familiar to anybody out there? Anybody with who's who's uh, at all paid attention to this this cult called Nexium the Nexium cult which had a lot of clout and, and uh perhaps still does even though it's 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 uh, the, the leader Keith Raniere is is in jail now uh but it was funded by the Bronf, Bronf, the Bronfman family uh, uh and uh had uh, the support of various uh, um, powerful people, the Dalai Lama. They had they had uh, enough juice to get the Dalai Lama to come and speak to them. Now it's possible. I hope I hope that the Dalai Lama didn't know what he was doing, and uh, just just hadn't done his homework and read up on who these people were and what they were, what kind of stuff they did. Although at the time, maybe it just wasn't. It wasn't that kind of knowledge wasn't out there yet. Who knows? But but the point is, this was a powerful organization, which which assumed control over a large number of people, and uh, the appeal to for women in this in this group Nexium uh, eventually became that they would become uh, slaves to Ke- to Keith Raniere, and that was what they were. That's what they were properly suited to be. And so he ended up having the, a bunch of a bunch of women who were high in the hierarchy of Nexium. He ended up having them branded, uh, not not on their buttocks, but on the the, the almost at like like uh, the lower part of their stomach, almost near their uh, pubic bone. Uh, they were they were branded there. They were branded with. Uh, K.R. Keith, Keith Raniere, um, and when so when I when I came across that scene where O is branded in this way, it it of course uh, it of course evoked. I, I thought, you know, <laughs> sicko Keith Raniere has probably read this book and probably he you know, has derived certain conclusions from it uh, regarding himself and uh, uh, you know how he how he feels about. The way he should be uh, worshipped by, uh, particularly the women uh, in his in his cult. So, in in this interpretation, what what we have in the story of O is a critique of these uh, these groups that, ha- that 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 live in the shadows that nobody really knows, but are who are very rich, very powerful. They are basically made up of the uh the ones who control everything <laughs> the ones who uh can can uh change uh uh you know can decide society's going to be go this way or it's going to go that way uh and they pull some strings and and suddenly <laughs> there's this new trend afoot that everybody's everybody's following along with uh you know these are the people who have that kind of power and clout behind them what are they really up to? These are depraved people. These are people who 
who ask to be worshipped and who ask to be, uh, uh, you know, it's sort it's sort of a, uh, you know, you go through an initiation ritual to become part of the cult, let, let us say. Um, and, you know, whether it's, whether we're talking masonry, and I'm not indicting all masons here, I know that there are various low-level masons who are just, I don't know, just, it's just, for them, it's just a club. It's just a, a place to hang out and hang out with the boys. Um, but higher level masonry is, is probably something different. Uh, but also all of these cults that spring up, including the Nexium cult, which I've talked about before, or the, the People's Temple, Jim Jones's <coughs> outfit. Jim Jones was definitely uh, some kind of CIA asset. I think all the evidence would suggest that. Um, and plenty of others, uh, that, that also, uh, follow suit that just seem, seem like they're, they're just weird people who, uh, who develop these weird, uh, ideas and prey on the gullible. But you look at, uh, a group like Nexium and most of their clientele are highly educated, wealthy, you know, uh, white upper middle class people. That's, that's, uh, pretty much where they drew, uh, their clientele from. That's who they appealed to. Uh, that was not the case with the people's temple. Um, but nevertheless, the, not nevertheless, they were, they, they both are examples of cults that, uh, initiated people into believing things about their leaders and initiated them into certain practices which uh in which uh they followed their leaders every word their leader was god on earth and they did what what they were told by him including drinking the kool-aid uh as happened notoriously at, at jonestown in guyana so when read this way O can be seen not as not so much as someone who's uh, a devoted, uh, you know, somebody not so much as somebody who's an al who's allegorically a stand-in for for a devout, uh, zealous, full of the spirit um, believer who who wants uh, wants to suffer for the sake of, of God, uh, for, 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 in order to do God's will, in order to, to be obedient to God's, uh, uh, laws and dictates and, and, uh, uh, and so forth. But instead in this, in this reading, O becomes someone who is essentially brainwashed. Essentially she's a, a, a victim of what later became known as Stockholm syndrome because one of the the stumbling blocks for of people who don't like the book, people who are against the book, and you know, I think uh, uh, feminist groups have have railed against the story of O for obvious reasons. And I, you know, I I can even I get there, I get, I can uh, I can dig where they're coming from because this is a story about a woman's degradation and her willingness to be degraded and how she derives pleasure, how it's like her, her whole, uh, her whole purpose is in life is to, to become enslaved and that she's ha she's happy in, in her bonds that, that, that she has again, happiness in slavery, which is a phrase that appears in the book. And it was also, it's also a song by Nine Inch Nails. So unsurprisingly, uh, so there you go. Uh, is, is O ultimately a, an, an admirable person, a heroine, uh, you know, a stand in for a saint, or is she someone who is victimized by the powerful, victimized by the, uh, the true rulers of this earth who are who are sick, sadistic, demonic, evil, uh, people 
who get off on uh, on inflicting pain. It seems that one could go either way, and that's part of what makes the the story so interesting. Uh, because you do, uh, when reading the, the the book, which was written again, was written by a woman. I have, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, it was written by a woman, and you know there there's there i i get the uh the appeal of you know uh, you know the i don't think i don't know whether it's it would be called a kink or not but the the i, I get i understand the appeal of submissive submission submissiveness you know with a <laughs> the, i don't want to say bsdm i don't want to trivialize it as like uh you know uh something, uh, uh, you know, like a, like a kink community or anything like that. But the, 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 the notion that, that women get, are, are happy when they, when they submit, uh, it, it's, it's not a notion that we're supposed to believe in these days. It's not a notion that, it, uh, it's, it's something that if you say it, if you express the, the idea that, a woman should submit to her husband, for for example, in marriage, which is always the the, the traditional notion of Christian marriage. Uh, that you uh, you will have a very hard time in our society today if you express that opinion that a woman should submit to her husband, whether you're a man or a woman. Um, it's it's an idea that that is that is regarded as. Uh, as outdated and as, uh, as, you know, uh, despicable. But on the, on the other hand, you do have many reported instances of, of, you know, these, uh, I am woman, hear me roar kind of feminist, uh, types who, who get into this stuff, who get into the, the, um, the thrill in sexual situations or sexual scenarios, the thrill of, of, uh, of being submissive. There's got, there is something to that. Now, submissiveness is one thing, you know, submissive, submit submissiveness to your husband, just in the sense that you, you let him make the, the, the decisions ultimately about, uh, about the family or about, uh, this, that, or the other thing. Um, but the submission doesn't mean domination. It doesn't mean uh, degradation at all. But you take a movie like Secretary, a movie that was, or this, is it, was it Secretary or The Secretary? A movie that would not be made today. It was made in the early aughts. And uh, that it's a movie that, uh, you know, a lot of women really love, really love, uh, and I know this for a fact. A lot of women really, really are into it. Really, uh, really are turned on by it. And uh, what's it about? It's about a woman who is who gives herself, who who submits herself uh, to her lover, and and uh, you know he he spanks her. He doesn't whip her in this case, but he does spank her, um, and ties her up and do it's, it's and other things, but you know, it, secretary and uh story of O are on the same spectrum. They're both about female submissiveness, but story of O takes it, of course, much, much further. It takes us, takes it well past the, the, the bounds of what most of us would be comfortable with and <clears throat> takes it into uh, a, a place, you know, where that's that seems to be quite sinister because none of us wants to think of uh, a a uh, of um, you know submission uh, a woman's submission to her husband or some other type of proper submission to a a uh, a god appointed authority let us say you know in a in a certain uh, system of beliefs. You are compelled to obey the established authorities to the extent that they, you know, continue to uphold righteousness. Once they 
once they uh, have shown themselves to be unrighteous, then all bets are off. But, and the same thing in a marriage, you don't have to submit to a woman. To, you don't have to submit to a man who's asking you to do things that are plainly immoral uh, or making, making you complicit in things that are, that are plainly immoral. So, uh, so the, the submissiveness is conditional. But there's something, I think, about the whole notion of abandoning yourself to submission that appeals to a lot of women, whether they want to admit it or not. And that's why Story of O is, you know, appeals to a lot of female readers. And that's why the movie Secretary, or even, uh, even uh, the, uh, what was it? Oh, the Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> yeah, all of those are on the spectrum. They're on the same spectrum. Um, and... And, uh, and there's something to that, but that of course can be abused. And I think we are invited in this reading of, of the story of, O. we are invited to, to see, uh, what takes place in the story and what, what O endures and, and how she, how she, how she, uh, submits to it all and, and not just submits to it, but is happy to. And it's more is is that is happier and happier, the the more she is, uh, the more degrading things that she is made to do. Uh, that that we're meant to see it as more of a an instance of uh, uh, Winston Smith at the end of Orwell's nineteen eighty four loving Big Brother, you know the final sentence, he loved Big Brother. In that case, he was. He was brutalized and tortured uh, until he was willing to say that two plus two equals five. And he was willing to say that he loved Big Brother, not because, you know, he naturally was inclined to love Big Brother, but because it, it, it was, you know, his uh, his uh, uh, sen- sense of, of rebelliousness against Big Brother was just was just uh, tortured out of him. Maybe that's the way we're supposed to regard O and uh, her mindset all along in all of this. So just some ideas, just some suggestions uh, for anyone who's interested. Thanks for watching.